All right. Hey, everybody. So this is Josh Bruce, and we're actually not going to be working on the string class. This is going to be a different uh, thing. And what inspired this is actually working on the string class. So yeah, there is an association there. Um, and basically what ended up happening is, so full disclosure, I record these things in advance, right? Um, just so that I can deal with life, um, should it happen. And also, um, I'm very pull-based, so if people aren't watching them and they're not liking them and they're not commenting on them, then you know I, I don't feel compelled to release them earlier and um, and that sort of a thing. So um, a one-week cadence kind of seems nice. And basically, I've got. 20 episodes of the string class um, and just to put that in context as of this recording right now there are only two that are published so with that said um, the last few right so about 16 episode 16 through about 20 we started talking about coding style um, you know where do curly braces go how do you write um, you know functions you know, should they be, uh, let's see, how can I mess this up? Final public static function, if I could type function x. Um, let's go ahead and make that abstract. Let's save. Oh, there should have been an error there. I feel really disappointed, um, and as should you. So um, anyway. You know, should you write them this way, abstract public static function, or should they be something more like public abstract static function, um, right? And some people get really, really into this, right? Um, I mean, we get huge conversations about tabs versus spaces and, you know, curly braces and semicolons or you know, real languages don't use semicolons. Um, and even in PHP, you actually have a lot of options, right? So like, um, just take conditionals, for example, right? So if you have a one line conditional, you know, air quotes around one line. Um, so basically, if true, right, you can actually just come down here and say return x, you know, and, and that works just fine. You don't need any curly braces or anything like that. Um, the language is flexible that way. Um, of course, what, we're, what most of us are used to seeing or accustomed to seeing is something like that with the curly braces um, <clears throat> and the body in between the curly braces. Um, what I don't see very often is this variant, which is, um, I think, still valid, um, which is, you know, if, and instead of the curly braces, you use colons, right? And then you actually have to explicitly state in if um, and the semicolon. And um, I believe WordPress used to use this variant a, a lot in their templates. So anyway, um, all that to say, we've, we've moved up to um, coding styles. And basically, um, part of that includes the what's called the PHP fig. Okay? And the PHP fig basically means the framework interoperability group. Right? And what they do is they come up with different recommendations um, for the community as a whole and for you know, how we as a community, the, the PHP development community, um, make our code mobile. Right? So how do we um, auto load things, right? like Composer is based off of that uh, conversation. And not only that, but how do we make developers mobile? Right? How do we make it so that I can go and jump into somebody else's code and have a pretty decent understanding, maybe, of what's going on there? Right? Um, and I don't have to relearn a different, completely different dialect of PHP. And so, anyhow, all that to say, I'm a big fan, a big proponent of uh, PSR 12, which is under review right now, and one of the uh, sort of one of the only real. Uh, rules that I don't like or that I don't abide by is actually ordering um, of these of static, public, final, abstract, and, and that sort of a thing. Um, and so what I did is I went and I got a um, 
a linter essentially, right? Um, and so basically it's a static code an analyzer. And so by static code analyzer it just means that there's not a runtime environment. It's not going to execute any of the code. It's not going to do any of that stuff. It's just going to read it, right? It's going to read it and then based off of certain things, um, in this case rules or um, specifically for PHP code sniffer, sniffs, does the code comply with that? Right. And it's going to then throw warnings and errors inside of, um, at least in theory, inside of my code. And so um, let's see if we can run this. And I'm going to run it against um, the string class. Oh, member function get declaration name on null. Oh, line 28. That's why stuff's breaking. Oh. Why did I move that down there? Well, like the description says, these are completely unscripted um, and unrehearsed. So um, now, in theory, if I put in abstract public static function, I should get an error, and I do. And so if we mouse over, we see the error. Method x must declare visibility after static, right? And so what the uh, what code sniffer, what that custom rule is saying is that I actually need to um, break P away from PSR 12. Right? So PSR 12, if we come down here to uh, abstract final and static, so section 4.6, it says when present the abstract and final declarations must precede the visibility declaration. I totally agree with this rule um, because I think that optional, um, all the optional things, optional keywords should be to the left. Now it also goes on to say, when present, the static declaration must come after the visibility declaration. That's the part I actually disagree with, because static is an optional keyword. Therefore, it should come before all the required keywords. And inside of here, methods, I think, yeah. <clears throat> uh, oh, let's just look for visibility real quick. It basically says, so that's properties, so, um, so methods, visibility must be declared on all methods, right? So if we come up to the top of the def and look for the definitions of the keywords must, must not, required, shall, shall not, and all of that good jazz, it says it follows R RFC 2119. And so if we come here to RFC 2119, this is what we get. And we get a list that basically says one must, this word basically means the same as required or shall. And it means that the definition is an absolute requirement of the specification, right? It has to be there. So as soon as we make visibility have to be there, that becomes a um, required keyword. So visibility and function are both required keywords for defining a function. So that's why I I set up my um, my functions the way I do is because basically public function and the name of the function and the parentheses are the minimum requirement of PSR 12 for a valid function to have a valid function so anyhow <clears throat> so I really got into uh, the code sniffer and I thought it was really nice because I could um, you know, make my own rules and things like that. There are plenty out there. PHP CS Fixer is another one um, from the friends of PHP who make a lot of stuff for the community as well. Um, and basically what I, what I sort of learned from my analysis of, of the tools is that these things can have, um, will have, tend to have one, one primary mode, but they'll be able to do two different things. 
So we're going to go ahead and open up a new document. I'm going to make the text a bit larger. And so the, the modes that these things can be in is one, um, correction mode or editor mode, depending on how you want to look at it. Um, the other one can be analysis mode or, again, editor mode. Right? Um, so kind of confusing. But this is basically more of a feedback mechanism. So more like uh, spelling and grammar check in a word processor. And that's what we have going on here, right? So again, if we type in abstract public function um, static, right? Um, it's just telling us, hey, according to the rules you've established, the grammatical rules that you've established, this, this level or, or this arrangement of semantics is invalid. So you might want to do something about that. Um, and not only that, but there is a CLI tool. Uh, most of them do have some form of CLI tool, and so that's what I'm doing over here, um, where I discovered that error. Um, and you can see that, okay, oh, because it's doing it on a fixed one. Yeah, so class string contains one abstract method and must therefore be declared abstract. Da, 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 da. Um, so I'm actually getting multiple errors, not just that one. So they have a CLI tool, and one of the things that sort of got me was that they're very configuration heavy. Um, so basically there's a lot of flags that you can set, right? So if we go to PHP CS config generator, um, we can see this here. And basically each one of these things is a flag, right? That I can set into this config file that makes it understand, right? And so, <clears throat> And there's just a lot of them. And you know, when you're kind of like me, and I'm big on the open close principle, right? That something should be open to extension but closed to modification. Um, you know, this seems a little awkward because basically what we're doing is more of the open to modification. I am modifying sort of the fundamental way that this program operates um, using this configuration file. Um, and you know, just to be uh, complete uh, PHP code standard fixer config generator um, you have this thing right and each one of these is a piece of configuration that you can apply to this program this piece of software um, to then apply it to your um, code <clears throat> um, which is all well and good right um, and I got to thinking, like, one, I've never created a CLI tool before, anything that's interfaced with the CLI. Um, and, you know, could I make it where it's less about configuration and more about communication, right? Is there a way that I could do that? And so with this, sort of the initial video, which, you know, so far um, with this and the string class, it's really just sort of setting up the end game. Um, Let's sort of brainstorm some stuff, right? So let's let's first talk about must, should, and may, right? So there's, and I'm just going to use markdown. So basically, we have must as a keyword, which means that it's absolutely fundamentally required, right? And then we have should, which means that you know it doesn't have to be there, but it's strongly recommended, right? And so then we also have something called may. And if we come over here to um, RF, RFC 2119, you come down here in May, it says this or the adjective optional mean that an item is truly optional, right? Like it doesn't matter. Vendor to vendor, developer to developer, it doesn't matter. May just means May. Um, and then you also have um, the concept of just nothing, right? Um, so 
must, should, or may just exist. And then you have the keyword of not, right, which basically means the opposite. So this is exclusion. You know, must not is exclusion. Um, should not is recommended exclusion. And basically what I'm thinking is this. So error is a big deal. Warning is not as big of a deal, right? It's going to be a little yellow bit. Um, and then there's, you know, okay, right? With, with May, it's, it's just, it's okay. Um, and, and there's something interesting about this table when we sort of start thinking about it in a different way. If, if something doesn't require a rule because it's absolutely optional, then the rule won't be there. So let's assume that a developer using this package is just, is, is, if they don't need a rule, they're not gonna make a rule, right? Um, <clears throat> and so then it gets kind of interesting, right? When you start thinking about in, of, of a design and, and brainstorming the idea for a design, what do we really need to tell the computer at this point, right? So a rule really can only have one of two states, right? Must or should. And so at that point, we basically have a, um, a binary or a Boolean operator, right? So if must is true, then the lack of that thing is going to end up in an error. If it's false, but the rule exists, then it's going to end up in a warning, and then we have not, right? And if not is true, it's going to start to get funky. If not is true, then the existence of that thing is going to result in an error, right? But if it's false, the non-existence of that thing is going to end up in an error, right? And so now we have all four possibilities of this table figured out, but it's not using both keywords, it's actually using um, the most severe keyword and the um, only negation option. Right? So now let's talk about sort of the API, like the, the a desirable API. So if we come into the configuration file that I had to make to make this work, it basically says, okay, um, we're going to um, grab all of PSR2. We're going to forget this one rule from PSR2. And then we're also going to grab um, a different rule set, a different standard. And that different standard is up here. Now, from what I understand, I needed to create that folder so that we can get this reference, right? And it knows where to go. Uh, Code Sniffer knows where to go. And then we have this um, rule set XML file, and I can give it give the rule set a name, but it doesn't seem like it's actually used. Then what I do is I create a class that ends in sniff.php, and again, that's so Code Sniffer knows that's what I'm doing. And then I have to write a bunch of PHP. I basically say I'm registering this, and I want to pay attention to um, when you run into T functions, right? And then what Code Sniffer is going to do is it's going to pass in the file and it's going to pass in um, a stack, uh, which I'm assuming is their, their AST. And then what I have to do is write the code, the PHP code that details out what all of that means, right? Um, which, you know, is fine for, for what it is. It's, it's completely fine. I mean, it works. It was not that much of a headache. Um, but I was thinking, like, you know, wouldn't it be cool if I could do something like rule applies to methods um, must or must have uh, visibility, right? And basically, I could just put that. You know, I could write that and the software would actually figure that part out, right? Um, and so then it becomes kind of interesting as well because I could do something like rule set 
and I'm totally about to break one of the uh, one of the concepts here, but or one of the the recommendations. Um, and so basically, rule set and I I don't know what to say here. Uh, rule set rules. There we go. Because again, just brainstorming here. Um, what if we could then, as the first argument, it's going to be an array. So let's just leave it empty for now. But what I want to do is I want to say, you know, rule methods must have visibility. Done, right? Um, and and so so we're good. But what if I wanted to come in here, and I actually wanted to um, say something like rule set. Um, PSR2, right, and automatically get all of the rules from that and then have the ability to override it. Yeah? So, and, and really try to make it this plain language kind of concept. And so, anyway, that got my brain going and, and I decided that I would end up trying to do two sort of development um, projects at the same time, right? Um, at least from a video creation perspective. So that's what we're gonna try to do, and I think we can get here, right? But we've gotta start more simply than that. Um, and like I said, this video is mainly about setting things up and getting us to the point that we can, right? Um, so let's see, let's go into Finder. Um, I'm going to go ahead and just copy this project, which is the project that I have open, and uh, what am I going to call this? Uh, style. Uh, and I'm going to call it 01, and ooh, actually, you know what, let's delete that. I'm going to duplicate this. There we go. And I'm going to say style 01 open it and delete both of those and call this style end. Okay, so now I'm going to close all of this. Actually, yeah, so I'm going to close all of that. Open this back up and I'm going to say, I'm going to drag this over here. I'm just going to collapse this for now. Not sure. Uh, yeah, let's go ahead and leave it open. So I'm going to keep this, right? Because I, I want the styles to be the same, and maybe later we'll make it into a package. I'm going to delete this, right? And who knows? Maybe you know, one day I'll create a. Um, An actual base project here, but um, for now this is good, right? So I'm going to leave the vendor file open, but I'm going to check out. Uh, so editor config is fine. I need that. Um, it does feel a little weird that I'm creating one of these when I have one of them, um, but that's okay. So we're going to say we're just going to call this style for now. Library for um, uh, getting feedback on coding styles. Uh, library, all of that's good. Um, still need that, still need that. Uh, yep. And we're going to call this style, style. Okay. So we should be good there. Um, and. The composer lock file is still good. All right, so now um, probably not going to be able to get too far into these tests, but uh, I'm going to start with main test. And oh, that's a good thing I left that open. Um, so if we come down here, main test. Basically, I'm just going to steal the top part of that and go ahead and collapse that. And the main test, paste that in. Uh, eightfold style tests. 
I don't know what the class is going to be called yet. Uh, I do not need that. Right. So, so we're kind of good. Um, all right. And let's see. So, huh. I wonder what's going to happen when I go into shell now. Like, is it going to go into style end or is it going to go into string end? That's what I thought. So we're going to get out of string end and then we're going to go into style end. Wait, what? Oh, it's two up. Public, yep, yeah, there we go. All right, so now if we go into so it should be style 20, or style 01, style end. Oh, I need to escape the uh, space, I think. There we go. So now if I do vendor bin uh, PHP unit, right. And you may remember that from the um, first string video. Um, no test found in class, right? So let's do this. We're going to do public function. Let me make this a little bit bigger. And next time I'll have the different setup. So um, public function test um, can initialize uh, rule. Sure, why not? And we're basically going to say results equals rule. Yeah, let's let's start from baseline. I'm not even gonna guess what's coming up. Assert not null result um, that should fail. It does because eightfold style test rule not found, and of course we don't want to find it anyway. So um, we're gonna call this rule.php. We're gonna open. PHP. Uh, we're going to give it a namespace of eightfold style semicolon class rule new line. That should be it. Oh wait, um, and then inside main test, we're going to include it. Uh, of course, that really just means use, um, because again, we're using the uh, PHP fig standards, uh, PSR4, in fact, um, to auto load all our stuff. So, style, rule, there we go. And we should be able to do that. Eightfold style, rule not found. Okay, so we're going to do composer dump auto load just in case. That was the problem, and it was. All right, so, um, oh, and I also want to um, sort of keep my notes somewhere handy. So let's put them here. And yeah, I'm just going to put it into a long block quote. All right, so. So we've got it instantiated. Now to make the rest of this work, of course, we're going to have to do um, 
we're going to have to be able to parse files. We're going to have to be able to do a lot of interesting things that we'll talk about over the course, uh, all in due time. Um, but what I want to do is I want to um, sort of find a rule that is atomic and simple, right? And I don't mean simple to implement. I just mean it doesn't carry a lot of compound baggage with it, right? So for example, um, in PSR1, right, because this is going to be the base because it is the foundation for both PSR2 and 12, PSR1 in section 2.1 um, says PHP P code must use the long um, left angle bracket question mark PHP question mark right angle bracket tags or the short echo which is left angle bracket question mark equal sign question mark right angle bracket tags it must not use the other tag variations um, for example um, one of the tag variations that I believe you can actually use is just straight question mark right angle bracket Right, to close out some PHP code as well. So it's basically saying let's use the longer versions. Um, and But it's a compound thing. You can use this or this other thing. right? Or I have to check for all the other variations that we can't use. Um, the, uh, a file should declare new symbols, uh, classes, functions, etc and cause no other side effects, or it should execute logic with side effects, but should not do both, right? And then it goes into um, sort of this longer description. Uh, and what's nice is that it does have um, something we can actually use for testing purposes, right? Like here, it has an example of like, this is causing a side effect, this has a side effect, but this is a declaration, therefore this should fail, right? Um, or this fails this, this specification, um, or at least there should be a warning, because I think it's a should, yeah, um, so it should be a warning. Um, and, you know, you do have things like class constants must be declared in all uppercase with underscore separators. Um, so the fact that it's just on the constants and they have to be declared on uppercase, that makes it kind of simple, but as soon as we throw in the word with, now all of a sudden, life is different, right? Um, and so ultimately, I think we get down to the bottom where it's basically section 4.3 and just says method names must be declared in camel case. All right, so that is a simple rule, but it's gonna take a lot to get there. <laughs> so, um, so let's go ahead, uh, and I'm probably going to do this a little bit more meticulously just because it's not as uh, um, it's, it's a lot newer territory for me with regard to what we're doing here. So uh, method names must must be Declared in camel case. Oh, tab. All right, and so how do we do that? All right, we've got to be able to get a method. You know, we've got to be able to crack open a file. We've got to be able to, that file has to have a class on it because that's the only place that methods will be um, because functions are in the global space. Um, but we've got to be able to crack that open, analyze the class, right? Grab the method and then get the name and then assert or assess whether or not the name is camel cased or not, right? So, yeah. What does that look like? So let's go ahead. I'm going to put this down here. And we're not going to do this. Um, I'm not going to make it by the end of this video. So um, I just want to give us a really good starting point. So what I'd like to be able to say, right, 
is that basically result equals rule. Right. Hmm. Now let's do this. Rule. Yeah. Okay. So rule applies to. That's what those two colons are going to mean to me. Um, at least mostly um, applies to methods. Must. Let's go ahead and do must be. And I'm going to say camel cased. Right? So that's the rule. Now, hmm. I'm going to need a file. But I need it to be a class, I think. So basically, I'm going to say file open and we don't have one yet but we'll get one um, so I'm just gonna call it main PHP and then I'm gonna create apply rule and that passes in a rule And I'm going to say result equals hmm, file results. Let's let's stick with singular for now. So file result. Uh, no, let's do process. Hmm, mm -hmm. Uh, so. And hmm, this assert. Do we want to do true false or do we want to do something that's a little bit? Let's start with true false. Because um, what I'm thinking is like HTTP codes, right? Like 400, 404, uh, 202, right? Um, let's just go with true false for now. Uh, is true result right so basically we're asking uh, did it pass um, so yeah and then of course if I do run the tests we get errors as we should because there's no method on the class rule called methods um, so that's where we're going to start, and we're going to start that next time. So hopefully you find this interesting. If you do, um, leave a comment, uh, like the video, do something, you know, reach out, um, find me on Twitter, that sort of thing. Um, and you know, I'll focus more on this than I will on the streams, or vice versa, or you know, whatever. Like I said, I just kind of go where the poll is. So um, having said all that, thank you so much for making the time. I really do appreciate it, and I'll see you around.